There's only room for three bodies in the refrigerated section. Bodies of 14 others are laid on the floor. Faces uncovered for their families to identify. We always have to have hope because we believe in a God of hope. And he said that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against his church. He has protected it for 2,000 years and will continue to practice people in Egypt. Overwhelming the sense of peace, unity, um, a voice for the people with no voice and our brothers and sisters in Egypt, a voice for them, that's what we heard and that's what we felt. It was really, I think just having everyone together was just um, very, very powerful. In terms of the future of the Christians in Egypt, it is in the hands of all Egyptian people and there is eternal hope there. You know, there's always going to be hope because there's always going to be Christians in Egypt. I hope that it gets recognition and people recognise why we're here and the individuals all over the country and uh, maybe if the government in Australia recognises it and that can make some noise around the world and hopefully Egypt will uh, change something about the way things happen. The prayer vigil is basically aimed at lifting up our hearts to God for the suffering that's happened in Egypt and especially um, in the latest uh, massacre on the 9th of October where 27 people lost their lives. So we're here lifting up our hearts to God and praying that God might intervene um, and that we call for the international world to really support what's happening in Egypt and put pressure on the Egyptian government to change what's going on. The message that we need to deliver to the people is that it's all about equality. It is all about letting people live in peace and love. Eleisonimes otios opatir opantokrator panagatries shopinemen amin. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil through Jesus Christ our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, er, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us us to this hour. Pray that God have mercy and compassion upon us. Hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints for that which is good on our behalf at all times for the remission of our sins. Lord have mercy. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Grant us to complete this holy day and all the day 
days of our life. In all peace with your fear, O envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, and the rising up of enemies, hidden and manifest. Take them away from us and from all your people and from this holy place, but those things which are good and profitable do provide for us. For it is you who have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions upon all the power of the enemy. Finally, Lord, hear us when we pray. Thankfully, our Amen. Father, who art Amen. in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I wish to begin with the words of St. Paul, who says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the strength of the Christian faith, and it is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us to love our enemies. The weak people use weapons and tanks, burning of churches and hateful language to express themselves. But as Christians, we are called to love, love in its sublime meaning, to even sacrifice one's life as Christ did for the sake of humanity. On the cross, he forgave his enemies and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. The Lord says, love your enemies, Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Yes, we have a right to be saddened by recent events in Egypt, but never lose sight of Christ's teaching, for it is our conviction at all times and under all circumstances. Yes, my dear brethren, we must forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Last month on October 16, Ayman Nabil Labib, a 17-year-old Coptic student in the town of Malawi, was beaten to death by two of his Muslim classmates. Why do you think his classmates and his teacher turned on him in this barbaric way inside of the classroom. Amen's mother said in a statement that the teacher nearly choked my son and some Muslim students joined in the beating. Why? The very sad reality is that Amen refused to conceal the cross tattooed on his wrist and to remove the crucifix from around his neck. That is why they killed him. So, in post-revolution Egypt, it is still justifiable to kill innocent Copts in this barbaric way. Imagine if this happened in an Australian setting. What would have been the reaction here in Australia? Yet this story was not mentioned in any of the international media at all. In September this year also, a 14-year-old Christian girl was prevented from entering school because she refused to wear a veil. The school management described her as a flaunt for not covering her hair. Coptic students were forced to obey for fear of the school management's threats, except the girl and her parents who refused this decision because it is inconsistent with religious freedom and a blatant Islamization of education in Egypt. 
The Egyptian authorities have been forcing us to keep silent towards this persecution for many years. And they keep telling us, we will solve all the Coptic issues, that Copts are part of the fabric that make up Egyptian society. We will solve your issues internally, they say. Don't involve the international community, they cry out to us. That Copts in the lands of immigration are traitors of Egypt. We are not certainly traitors of Egypt. We love Egypt. It is where our Lord came and visited. And God himself said of Egypt, blessed be Egypt, my people. So how can we be traitors of Egypt? But we are crying out towards this injustice that our people are seeing on a daily basis. Well, I want to tell these Egyptian authorities today a very clear statement. We will no longer be silent. We will be a voice for the voiceless. We will continue to raise our voices very loudly and clearly until peace and justice prevails for the Christian Copts of Egypt. We are supposed to be living in a period of renewal and transformation in Egypt post the 25th of January revolution. It has been called the Arab Spring that is supposed to bring hope of a brighter future for Egypt. I'm sorry to say that this Arab Spring has become for us a Coptic winter. Will Egypt really change? Will there be justice for the Coptic Christians of Egypt in this post-revolution Egypt? Several years ago in the Australian Parliament, Kevin Rudd, the Prime Minister at the time, made a public apology for the injustice towards the indigenous people of Australia, our Aboriginal brothers and sisters. That can happen in Australia today because we are a nation that respects human rights and religious freedom. I dream, I dream and wonder every day, will I ever hear in a future Egyptian parliament, the Egyptian president, stand up courageously for the indigenous Copts of Egypt and say, and say, I am sorry for all the injustice and persecution that have happened to the Coptic Christians over 1,400 years since Islam entered into Egypt. I'm sorry for all the church bombings and the burning and damages of Christian places of worship. I'm sorry for the hundreds of thousands of Christians that were martyred for their faith throughout the centuries. I'm sorry that past governments discriminated against Christians and did not give them sufficient positions in government, universities, and in all aspects of Egyptian life. I'm sorry that not one Copt has ever been elected to parliament. He may go on, I hope, to say, I'm sorry that we persecuted converts to Christianity and tortured them in our prisons. I'm sorry that we allowed the media free reign to vilify a great national leader such as Pope Shenouda III. I'm sorry that the media was clearly prejudiced against the Copts and allowed Sheikh Sha'rawi for scores of years to vilify Christianity on public television. I'm sorry for the microphones from mosques targeted towards Coptic churches that blare messages full of hate and incite sectarianism. I'm sorry that President Sadat placed Pope Shenouda III under house arrest for three and a half years and placed many bishops and priests in filthy Egyptian prisons. I'm sorry that we tapped the phones of your priests and bishops and invaded their privacy. I wonder if a future president of Egypt would be brave enough to get up and make such an apology. It is unfortunate that the Egyptian ambassador in Canberra was very upset from me a few years ago when I mentioned such an apology was in order and told me never to mention this again. Mr. Ambassador, I wonder why are you so afraid to face up to the truth and be a man of justice?
while we are supported spiritually by the church leaders who are gathered here today to offer their prayers with us, I'm heartened to see that we are also supported materially and politically by our national leaders. In the recent rally in Sydney, the Federal Immigration Minister Chris Bowen and the Opposition Leader Tony Abbott both spoke passionately in support of the, the Coptic community in Egypt and in Australia. And in the Federal Parliament in Canberra, ministers of the government and members of parliament from both sides of politics spoke in unanimous support and in a motion for the human rights of the Coptic people. The Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister also condemned the attacks of Maspero Square and the Foreign Minister, Mr Kevin Rudd, actually called in the Egyptian ambassador and made very clear to him the Australian government's uh, concern over the ongoing violence, the perpetration of violence against the Coptic people. He also made clear to the ambassador uh, the need for a transparent and independent inquiry into the, this recent attack on the Coptic people. Their duty as our representatives is to do everything they can to represent our beliefs that there should be freedom of religion and freedom from persecution and violence and also the promotion of peace and security in Egypt. I'm here on behalf of the Prime Minister, who would have liked to have been here herself had she not been required to be at the G20 summit in France. It's been deeply upsetting to see the events in Egypt through the news media, but today it is heartbreaking to hear from Australia's Coptic community how angry and frightened you all feel even here in Australia which should be our sanctuary. What's happened is different from previous outbreaks of communal violence. Egypt's Copts have a right to expect that when there are problems in the community, the institutions of state, especially the army, should protect and not harm. That's why the foreign minister has spoken to the Egyptian ambassador. He told him on behalf of our government and all Australians that we are concerned about the violence that is taking place in Egypt. I want to reassure all of you that we're with you and that we are doing what we can. Your people in, e in Egypt, they're tough, they've got each other and they've got you here. They have faith, these are tough times, but be reassured. Keep up the campaign. Don't go quiet. You will not be whipped up into counterproductive actions, I know that, so I am confident in saying that you should keep the campaign up. This is Australia. You are free here. Use your voice. It's an honour to join with the many people in Australia today who mourn the persecution of the Copts in Egypt. As you all know, during the three decades of the rule of Hosni Mubarak, discrimination against the Copts increased. They were regularly targeted for discrimination and were subject to increasing violence from the Islamist jihadi radicals. And tragically, one such case occurred when six Christians and an off-duty police officer were massacred as they were leaving a Christmas service in January of last year. Ladies and gentlemen, it was hoped that the so-called Arab Spring would bring a new era of religious toleration to Egypt. Instead, and sadly, it has marked a Coptic winter in which many of the estimated 80 million Copts who constitute about 15% of the country's population have been targeted. And the most egregious case of the violent intolerance of the Coptic people came recently with the tragic killing of many innocent people by the Egyptian military forces. Those images were sickening. And as my colleague Mark Dreyfus has said, the rest of the world, including Australia, rightly protested this blatant and callous abuse of human rights. <clears throat> 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 <clears thro
Ladies and gentlemen, in a democracy such as ours, we must protest civilly, but protest we must. When the human rights of any people are abused, the liberties of all are endangered. We are part of one body of humanity. The totalitarian impulse unchecked threatens us all. It must be confronted, it must be resisted, and it must be defeated. O Lord, the souls of your servants whom you have taken, repose them, and may they be worthy of the kingdom of the heavens. As for us all, grant us our Christian perfection that would be pleasing to you, and give them and us a share and inheritance with all your saints. O Lord, o Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Those and everyone, O Lord, whose names we have mentioned and those whose names we have not mentioned, those who are in the thoughts of us all, and those who are not in our thoughts, those who have fallen asleep and reposed in the faith of Christ, we pray for all of them. O Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. There are no rewards in this world or the next for self-inflicted martyrdom. If this message could be given through to those who blow others up, and kill themselves in process, our world would be a better place. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. My heart is severely pain with me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me fearfulness and trembling have come upon me and horror has overwhelmed me so I said oh that I had wings like a dove I would fly away and be at rest. I needed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. O Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the souls of those who were killed in Maspero, in the place of your rest. O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the souls of your servants, the martyrs of Maspero, for you alone are the lover of mankind. O Lord, hear our prayer. It is my distinct honor and privilege to be here with you on this day and to pay tribute to the many young martyrs who have shed their blood on behalf of Christ's Holy Church in Maspero, throughout Egypt, and indeed throughout the world. We Orthodox Christians are no strangers to suffering and to the shedding of blood, for we have suffered throughout the world we have suffered for many centuries, and Egypt continues to suffer to this day. Egypt bleeds out, as my own Serbian Orthodox faithful in Kosovo 
and Metochia bleed out because they stand in testimony firmly committed to the name of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your grace, beloved friends, take courage because we have gathered here today as one to bear witness so that no Coptic Orthodox Christian can ever again say we are alone, we have been forgotten, you are not forgotten, we are here with you today and we will remain with you side by side. Not one drop of that innocent youthful blood which was shed by those 27 martyrs has been shed in vain. Every drop of that precious red blood which has fallen onto the fertile soil of Egypt will give yield and produce fruit for Christ's holy church. For out of every drop of blood, new life will spring in abundance everywhere that they have laid and shed their blood and given their lives, put down their bodies for their faith, a new church will be erected because this is the sowing of the seeds of Christ's holy faith. Take courage, I repeat, take great courage for, from this moment and forward. You will never be alone. The eye of the world is now focused upon Egypt where even Christ himself as a child took refuge when his holy mother Mary and foster father Joseph took him there and he sought shelter in Egypt and Egypt gave him shelter and Christ will never forget the hospitality of the good and the faithful people of Egypt. You in your day saved the Christ child and now in turn Christ will save you. Amen. May it be so. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. On behalf of the National Council of Churches in Australia and her 19 member churches, I express our sympathy at the her recent horrific and tragic events in Maspero in that massacre. I also assure you that you are not alone, that the support of the churches, not only in Australia, but around the world, are with you. I follow international affairs very closely. I thought something is very wrong in Egypt. Something is happening beneath the surface. And then I heard in Australia that you, our Coptic Orthodox citizens, have had to have four of your churches protected by the Federal Police and Australian Security. This is intolerable in Australia. The Coptic Orthodox Church represents the largest outpost of Christianity remaining in the Middle East. For all of us who value uh, religious tolerance, not just in this country but all around the world, what happens to the Copts in Egypt is of incredible significance. The world's eyes are on Egypt. Field Marshal Tantawi has responsibility personally to see that the Egyptian people... continue to express the mainly 
good relations that have existed between Christian and Muslim people in Egypt and throughout the Middle East. We expect you to continue your peaceful, democratic and constructive and effective work led by His Grace the Bishop. And from this Federation Square to Tahrir Square, we send a message to the Egyptian military and to the Egyptian government, please continue to protect the Coptic Orthodox Church. It's a great privilege to be able to be here. I'm one of those ordinary Australians that uh, Michael uh, referred to in his speech. I was deeply moved, personally deeply shocked and moved by what I saw um, in the TV coverage uh, and in what I read about uh, what happened in, uh, in October. So uh, when an opportunity uh, came to represent uh, World Vision here um, at this vigil, um, I uh, didn't take uh, too long to uh, accept. It's a privilege. So we pray for peace, for a better way, for restraint, for healing, for human dignity, and uh, we hope in some small way that the combined presence together today of so many different churches and organisations will lend some small encouragement to your community in an incredibly difficult time. Thank you for the privilege of being here. The foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world is the recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family. Egypt is no stranger to this declaration. It took part in the drafting and was one of the countries to unanimously adopt it in 1948. As the Egyptian military transitional government and future leaders of Egypt wonder how they can realise the common aspirations of the Egyptian people, they need not look any further than that first sentence of the declaration. They must accept that the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in Egypt is the recognition of the inherent dignity and human rights of all Egyptians. <laughs> I come from a church and a community that for the whole of the 20th century suffered persecution and I, when I heard Mark Dreyfus say if you are people of faith then you should pray I'd like to say to you that what we cannot achieve through our human struggle God will do on our behalf if we put ourselves in his hands for the spirit of the Lord will have his way amongst us. So now I would like to invite His Grace Bishop Suriel um, to um, launch the peace message directly across the globe. I'm about to send this tweet on Twitter. And this is what the message says. This message brings the world together to pray for peace and justice for Copts and all Christians. Retweet to bring hope to a future. And this is using the hashtag for peace. So I have sent this message now. And also, and also on, on my Facebook page, I want to bring the world together to pray for peace and justice for cops and all Christians share this status to bring hope to a future for peace. I think it's been very positive. I think uh, our dignitaries have been very impressed uh, by this public worship and the uh, stand for support for the Copts of Egypt. And I think that the Coptic community here in Australia and in particular in Melbourne uh, were very impressed by this. And it's good that we were united together, that there were vigils not only in Melbourne, but across all of Australian cities and New Zealand. You know, tonight was, um, was really moving. I thought it was, it was just so touching to see everybody unite together. And I think that's what we need to see more of. We need to see more of one united voice speaking out for people who can't necessarily speak out for themselves. And I thought it was, uh, it was just a, a really nice demonstration of peace and love 
and a true reflection of the Coptic people. To hear the prayers, to hear the people lifting up their hearts to God, to hear all the support from the government and all the support from the church leaders, it brings real peace and real joy to our hearts. I think today also we really needed to deliver a very strong message from here in Australia across the globe to our military rule in Egypt at the moment, just to tell them it's what needs to happen is that a rule of law needs to be implemented and we're not seeing that now. And so until something like that happens and Christians and Muslims have democratic rights, Christians, you know, their, their rights are being questioned at the moment. So we need that. And that's why we're here essentially. We are making a good start, but as many of the politicians said tonight, we need to keep the pressure up and we continue to talk and to be a voice for the voiceless. This is very important.